blessing, every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name.
him all praise. Hallelujah. You alone can save 
bless your name in this place. We thank you for the cross. Jesus. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Power in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Restoration in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Ah, uh, breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Salvation in the name of Jesus. Turn around in the name of Jesus. Ha uh, ha. Uh, increase in the name of Jesus. Hey! for what he's done in your life for salvation for the cross come on for this past weekend what he did in this place for the salvation some miracles come on now god's blessing us god's blessing us come on now this is a time to stop and give him glory give him thanksgiving amen he's worthy of all the glory and all the honor worthy of all the glory and all the honor Oh, come on. He's done a lot more than that in your life. Come on. Hey, come on. Woo. That I want to stay up here for a second. We're gonna do this before we go because I want to go to the next song. I'm just being directed right now. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Leave the lights exactly the way they are right now. Just stay, keep playing behind. Just want to go quickly to a familiar passage of scripture that I've ministered out of many times, and many have read this. Um, 2 Kings chapter 3, and um, um, I want to pick it up at um I want to pick it up at um verse um verse 15 2nd Kings chapter 3 and verse 15 and the scene is this people of God are about to engage in a battle with Moab the enemy 
and um, and they've um, they're in the process of engaging, but they're not they haven't reached their destination to get into the battle yet. So they're not even in the battle yet. There's no there's no there's no fighting yet. There's no there's no exchange being done. They're on the way though to the battle, and as they're on the way to the battle. Uh, 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 there's an another, another enemy that they're dealing with and the other enemy that they're dealing with is the enemy of dehydration because now they're, be, they're dehydrated, right? Even the animals were dehydrated to the level of where they're about to start to fall over. People were about to start to die. That's how, and I don't know if anybody's been dehydrated before, I have to the level of having been in the emergency room coming back from Indonesia the next day in the emergency room and it's not, it's, it's scary and eventually your body starts to shut down. And um, so the, uh, they're dealing with Moab, the enemy, uh, the Moabites, but then before they're even engaging in that battle, um, uh, they're dealing with the enemy of dehydration. And it's serious and, um, and, 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 and God, uh, and the word of the Lord comes to them in the midst of it because God will not give up on us when we, when we kind of give up, he still hasn't given up. And when it seems like it's over or it seems like God is not around, that's when God is about to do some of his greatest work on your behalf. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And when there seemed to be no way, uh, if you don't give up and still, if you can just get a Jesus out, amen, Jesus. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know how, but I know you can, hallelujah. And maybe it's not a 50-hour prayer or a 50-minute prayer or, or an elaborate, or, or, uh, or, uh, but, but just, just, just to believe, to still believe in the midst of it that with him all things are possible. Because the Bible does say, if you believe, you shall see my glory. If you believe, you shall see my glory. And it's impossible to please God, the Bible says, without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him, but he is a rewarder. This is in Hebrews. He is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. Uh, let me tell you what diligent, here's, here's how you diligently seek him. When you're in something and, and, and you refuse to give up, and maybe it's not, uh, 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 like I said, you're, 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 you're praying these um, um, long um, prayers or because uh, you don't have the strength or the power, but, but you still believe. You're, uh, see, when you still believe that he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords, that he is the alpha and the omega, that he is the beginning and the end. Just believing that, you know what? Uh, what God has begun in my life, he shall bring to completion. Uh, just, see, 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 I, I'm, I'm seeking him because I'm believing still in him that the same God that saved me the same one that when I said Jesus pulled me out of the pit of hell and lifted me up and, and pulled me and turned my life around uh, 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 um, is the same one that, that's going to finish what he has started in my life and if he delivered me and he saved me back here he's the same yesterday today and forever ah, I, 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 I'm diligently seeking him so sometimes it's just in the midst of it As long as I'm breathing, God, I still believe that you can. How, what? I don't know. But I'm going to give you the glory. Uh, that's a word for somebody in here right now. What you need to start doing right now is start practicing because you're in something right now that you don't know what in the world's going on. For some, you don't even understand why. But you need to start celebrating because God's about to show up. Just don't give up. Just, just, uh, just don't give up. You, you think that, that you have no more strength, but, but does anybody have just, enough, just a little bit of strength to say, Jesus, I believe? No, 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 no. Do you have enough strength just to say, ah, Jesus, I believe? that you're still healing and you're still delivering and you're still 
setting people free, that you're a mountain remover, that you're a miracle worker, that, 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 that you, yeah, yeah, that, that with you all things are possible. And I believe that. I believe, I believed it back then, and I still believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I come in agreement with your word. Do you have just a little bit of faith to come in agreement with his holy word, to believe that if it's in the word of God, then if you believe it and you come in agreement with it, that settles it, and that's it. Amen? Shout, I believe. Yeah, keep playing, keep playing. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Keep me, I don't want to lose the flow. Okay, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. So watch this, so the, so this is the situation. And um, the man of God comes with a word. He says, but now bring me a harpist. While the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. And he said, ah, the harpist. Ah, that's worship. That's praise. You notice while the, the harpist was doing what? Well, uh, was playing. Uh, while the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and said, ah, while the harpist, the worship and the praise. Uh, you know, he inhabits the praise that people see. When we get into that, some praise and worship and you lift up his name, uh, God shows up in a powerful way, amen. Uh, things, uh, worship, 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 worship. It's a weapon that God's given us, amen. I said it's a weapon that God's given us. When, when, what's happening even right now as we're worshiping the Lord, the presence of God, and God's starting to move and, and, and starting to touch hearts. And, uh, worship, it's a weapon, it's a weapon, it's a weapon, it's a weapon. When fear tries to come in, worship him and praise him and lift up his name. Because where his presence is, anything that's not of him has to go. Fear goes. Depression goes. Heaviness goes. Hopelessness goes. Worship. It's worship. Just continue worship. Continue worship. Come on. Stand your feet. Stand your feet. Just worship a little bit long. Come on. Come on. Lord, I'm amazed. Just worship him. Just, just worship. Lord, I'm amazed. Jesus. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a weapon. What? Lord, I'm amazed. I Lord, I'm amazed. By you. Lord, I'm amazed. Are you? Are you amazed? I am. What a God. What a Savior. His grace, His mercy, His faithfulness, His patience with us.
yeah, yeah. And they believe that he shed his blood for you and me for the forgiveness of our sins as far as the east from the west do you believe that that he rose from the grave on the third day do you believe it do you believe yeah that we serve a risen lord resurrected king living god yeah yeah do you believe it yeah, yeah. believe do you believe he's still healing today do you believe he's still delivering today? Do you believe he loves you? Yes! Lord, we believe in you. Lord, we believe in you. Lord, we believe in you. Lord, believe in you. My God! believe that he can turn it around that he can turn it around Woo! whatever that situation is it's not too late they're still breathing and they're still gone that's on his throat That's right, that's right. lights just where they are just keep playing keep playing keep playing we get, we get another song here in a second i want to just continue worshiping watch this so while the while the harpist was playing while they they were worshiping while they the harpist the worship praise so when we wake up in the morning put a cd in there get worship going and when you're driving in your car to work worship 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 put some worship in Not just here for at home and when you're going to sleep at night. Some put some worship music even when you're going to sleep and 
lightly in the background. I just had to, when you leave the house, keep the worship going. Amen. Where his presence, remember where his presence is, where his presence is, there's peace that surpasses human understanding. And many in this room right now, you lack peace because of your situation. And fear has come to attack you of what if and what and this and that. And, and I understand that, that to be still and know that he's God and that God's got me covered and all these things, but I'm still restless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, 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 so pick up the weapon of worship and praise and watch what happens. When you're walking, you get home and or walking to maybe the mailbox or something and start to praise him, start to thank him. Thanksgiving and worship and yeah, yeah. Because fear's got to go and everything else has to go and yeah, 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 yeah. So while the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha. In other words, things started to happen. The hand, of, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha when the harpist was playing. So things start to happen. Because when we worship and we praise, we give God permission to step into our circumstances to show up and show off. When we worship him, we give God permission to step into our mess or whatever the situation is to flex his muscle on our behalf because God will never force himself on anybody. Worship and praise says, come, please. Worship says, I surrender all to you. Praising him and worshiping him says, I know I can't do it without you. Please, please, Lord, take control of my life. Take control. Be first in my life. Be, be first in my family. Be first in my time. Be first in my finances. It, worship is saying to letting him know, come, come, and, and, and be first. I, want, I, I, I put you first. Help me, Lord. And while the harpist was was playing a, the word of the Lord came upon Elisha and he said this is what the Lord says you uh, this is what the Lord says make this valley full of ditches for this is what the Lord says you will see neither wind nor rain yet this valley will be filled with water but there will you no wind no rain how's the water going to come look at some say that's not your problem God never asked you to worry that's it the miracle God is not saying i need help with the miracle you can't do it anyway so stop worrying about how it's gonna happen and start focusing on the instruction obedience to the instruction get the mind out of the way and trust in him and he says yet this valley will be filled with water and you will and your 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 cattle and your other animals will drink because see everyone even the animals were about to die this watch this this is an easy thing in the eyes of the lord you're thinking it's impossible say, this is too no this is it's this it's just how is this a, and god says it's easy you just need to just trust me believe in me start praising me even now for what I'm about to do. Stop praising me now that you're going to finish strong, that I've got you covered, that I'm, I, I'm faithful to finish the work I've started in you. Shall yes. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. Look at somebody say, God's got this covered. It's easy for him. He will also hand Moab over to you you will overthrow every fortified city and every major town. You will cut down every good tree, stop up all the springs, and ruin, and ruin every good field with stones. The next morning, about the time for offering the sacrifice. Ah, uh, <laughs> the offering for sacrifice. There it was. It was a time of what? Offering? Offering. That's another weapon God's given us. For God so loved the world that he gave.
giving. When we give of our time, our energy, when we, when we encourage somebody and we're, we're giving of ourselves and when we give of our finances, we're starting a miracle because we're giving to the house of the Lord and what we're telling him is we believe in your word and what you believe in which is the hurting the poor the afflicted the addicted the lost we believe in souls we be so we're giving into the kingdom so he's he's given us instructions even on giving I'm gonna talk about that in a second so it's interesting it was during the time of sacrifice offering there was water flowing from the direction of Edom and the land was filled with water now all the Moabites heard that the kings had come to fight against them. So every man, young and old, who can bear arms was called up and stationed on the border. When they got up early in the, in, in the morning, the sun was shining on the water to the Moabites. Across the way, the water looked red like blood. That's blood, they said. Those kings must have fought and slaughtered each other now to the plunder, Moab. And, 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 um, and if you continue to read the rest of the story, In verse 26, when the king of Moab, Moab saw that the battle had gone against him, he took with him 700 swordsmen to break through to the king of Edom, but they failed. So the bottom line is this. They withdrew and returned to their own land. In verse 27. They... The instruction was dig some ditches. And when they obeyed the word of the Lord, in other words, when they did the possible, the possible is when we read his word and just do what we can according to his word. No, we're doing our best. So the possible, when we pray, we're doing the possible. When we, um, when we're witnessing, we can't save anybody. God saves. Only God can change a heart, turn people's life. But, 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 but the possible is, we can give out a card and invite somebody to church. So we do the possible. He does the impossible. The possible. Dig some ditches. The possible is worshiping him, praising him. The possible is going to work and working. God, I need work. I need money. I need. I'm, I'm struggling. Well, yeah, but and you're you're still healthy. You got you know you're good and and you're 25 years old and you're. Well, I thought God says he's going to bless me and he's going to, he's with me and he loves me. Yeah. But God also said, don't be lazy, bum. bum. I'm sorry I said it like that. I'm sorry. Look at somebody. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy. And come to church and ask somebody to pray for you for breakthrough finances, for your finances. Do the possible. Go to work. And, 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 and then when offering comes around, um, how about sowing into the kingdom of God? Oh, you know, but the church and, 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 and giving and all this stuff. Uh, yeah, but you have no problem. I know I didn't have a problem back in the day. I was giving it to the bars and this and that and dog track and ra the horse tracks and Las Vegas. And now we can't, well, I can't, uh, what are you talking about? That's when God got a hold of me a couple months ago. Do you remember? I says I started thinking about it. I was, Man, I used to blow a whole paycheck in one night gambling, and I still survived and I got through. And that was without when I wasn't even saved. So God got a hold of me. He's like, when was the last time you gave me your whole paycheck in one? And I gave it that night. Remember? I did. You could check. Someone's like, did he really do it? Check. Get, we can even give you the financial records. I gave it. best thing I ever did you know when we give we're starting a miracle 
that we're doing the possible the possible God wants to encourage us in this place do the possible do the possible do the right thing throughout the week possible when we witness when we pray when we worship when we when we come to church when we come to church the Bible says forsake not the gathering of the saints so when I come to church what I just did was obey his word I, I, I'm coming to say thank you to the Lord and to lift up his name so when I come to church what I'm doing is I'm digging the ditch so I'm putting myself in position for my miracle for my increase and let me say something else the water came then the word of God what did he say the water came just like he said he was gonna do it if they didn't dig the ditches the water would have come but they would have had nothing to contain the water with they would have missed a miracle they would have died in that desert he's moving the question is, are we in position to? And the deeper you dig your ditch, the deeper the ditch, because the water showed up, which lets me know the deeper I dig, the more I can contain, the more I can receive. So you see, the more we're faithful and we stay consistent and we're telling God you can trust me that even in the midst of what I'm going through that I'm going to continue to worship you. I'm going to continue to prefer. I'm going to even, I'm not just going to give you thanksgiving during the times when, when I'm being blessed, but even in the hour of trial and tribulation and, 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 and even when I don't know what's going on, I'm still going to wake up every morning and give you glory and honor uh, because I wouldn't even be in this position if it wasn't for you. I know you're the one that saved me. You're the one that woke me up this morning. And I thank you, Lord, what I'm doing to, what I'm saying to God, I'm digging a ditch with my thanksgiving to let him know you can trust me that I, uh, even in the midst of what I'm going through, that I'm still going to be faithful to you. Since you're digging a deeper ditch, I'm doing the possible. When I'm not gossiping, I'm, when I'm not murmuring, I can do that. You can do that. It's a choice. It's a choice. Oh, I just can't. I can't control. Uh, no, you, you can, if you want to stop, you can stop. Complaining and gossiping and mur you know, backbiting and you see, when you're backbiting, you stop your miracle. When you're gossiping, you're stopping your miracle. Oh, you can sing all you want. You can have. But I can tell you right now, God's not very happy when someone's talking about somebody else in the church. Because now you're talking about one of his children. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, do, I just need us to stand up again and just worship. Worship some more. Just worship some more. Boy, just stand on your feet. Just stand on your feet. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. How about this? Let's dig some ditches right now in Thanksgiving when we thank the Lord for who he is, for the cross, for his goodness, for his mercy. Come on. Hallelujah. Showers of mercy and grace falling on every face. There is freedom. Jesus reigns. Jesus in this place. What? There is freedom yeah. where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is freedom. Come on now. Jesus! Lift your eyes to heaven. There is free. 
listen, listen, listen. If you're tired and thirsty, whoa, whoa, whoa. there is freedom. Yeah, he's got you. He's got you. If you're tired and thirsty, yes, there is. There is freedom. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, give your all. with our worship or praise thanksgiving come on hallelujah to you be all the glory and all the honor we put our faith in you we continue to believe we continue to trust in you Okay, so, 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 yeah, right there, yeah, right there, that, that, go back that, what you had that, 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 that sound that was right there, where we go, so, 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 as we're worshiping, and we're, and we're, and we're, 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 we're digging ditches, when, when we forgive somebody, we're digging, you may be seated, you may be seated again, a few more minutes, a few minutes, just stay with, so when we forgive, when we forgive, when we forgive, we're digging a ditch. When I'm merciful to somebody, I'm digging a ditch. God's not going to make you be merciful to somebody. That's a choice you make to say, okay, Lord. Now, what's real is, Lord, I, I, my heart, man, I'm still upset. I don't want to blow them up. <laughs> oh, well, that that was a little, that was too much. <laughs> I was like, I know it was a color. It's like a, like 90% of our church is like, yeah. That's us. If I didn't get that response, I'd say something's wrong in this church. Amen. I know we're okay now. Amen. So, 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 so the possible is. Lord, I, 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 I'm going to be merciful here, but I need your help in the process. Touch my heart because that I can't at this moment, but I know you can. But what I can do is surrender to you and bring my heart to you and say, Lord, do the surgery. Heal my heart and give me a love for that person. And God's not asking you to have to break bread with that person and go out to lunch afterwards every time. But that you know in your heart that you've released them and you don't have any bitterness against them anymore. And if, not, and if nothing else, to be able to pray for them, for them to move forward and to, to, to the point where, how about this, to the point of where you want them to succeed even more than you succeed. Ah. 
Look at someone say, that's digging a ditch. Now that, that's digging a deep ditch. How much water do you want? How much blessing do you want to come your way? Look at someone, keep on digging then. God says, do the possible. Do the possible. I want to finish with this and we're going to... And everyone knows my heart in this church about finances. It's about the people. It's about... We don't do... We don't, we don't, we don't, we're not, we don't do 50 messages on 10 ways on how to become... A, you know, none of that stuff, you know? Because God gave me a word. Is you keep the thing the thing? hurting poor, the afflicted, the addicted and lost and, and, and the cross and the altar call and never lose that focus and take the message outside the, outside the walls and, always, and reach the people, you'll never lack. And I'll take care of everything. And we've never made, well, you know, everyone knows that. We don't sit here taking 50 hours on the offering. But there's every so often I have to, and God told me this, I, I know this, but you still have to teach them though. There's a place and a time to teach them because in this world, we still operate with money. And God has given us instructions. While the harpist was playing, Elijah, the Lord spoke through him, the messenger, and gave them an instruction. Dig some ditches. That was a hopeless situation. And many in this room are struggling financially. Bills, this, that, behind. I've been there at a high level when I first got saved. But God says, see, anyone, and so God says, so when people say, I need breakthrough in my finances, if we're not following the instructions and in giving, though, after a while, you can get prayed for a thousand times. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your breakthrough and your and then your increase on the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28. He wants us to be the first half, the head and not the tail. Blessed going in, blessed going out, on top and off beneath. And what? That you will be a lender and not a borrower. That's a promise from God for his children. He goes, if you do it my way, with a, and remember, and do it with a joyful heart for the right reason. So if you got a calculator when you're giving, trying to figure out what you're going to get back, you missed it. So when we give, we also give, first of all, because we're thankful for what he's done. In Thanksgiving, and just happy to be part of this thing. And out of that Thanksgiving you know how you were impacted you were impacted by watching a program on tv how many stories we just heard mark martin over the weekend saying i turned down the television even when i tried to turn it off it came back i don't know i was listening amen i got it all you understand those programs cost money for those ministries Are you catching this? So somebody is giving to that assignment because they're giving out of thanksgiving for what God's done for them and understanding that the message is going forth to give hope to somebody else just like they were in a hopeless situation. I'm teaching this thing good right now. I, th I think I'm just trying to... How many of us have been impacted by or helped by or life was changed because a bus came and picked us up when we didn't have transportation and now have moved on because now they're getting stronger and stronger and i know testimony after testimony and even here at the church were well, the ones that were being picked up are now driving the bus because now they they were transitioning and a move and coming to the city and just needing some help in the beginning and just but then they got strengthened and they, as they were doing the right thing and coming to church and being able to get to church and all these things. And then they get to the point where it's like, 
and then they got a vehicle and then they got a better vehicle and then and ja, and every and now it's like hey and by the way uh can can can, can you know uh if you like I, i'm available to drive it's our three our sister every sunday faithfully she used to be and now she's dry and now she's giving back but somebody understanding not because I'm trying to get something financially back first of all no if that's it you missed it but understands also the principles and the instructions that hey the kingdom of this world and the kingdom of God are diametrically opposed we understand that but then we're in this system of of money and it takes money to do things so yeah let's save the world but but you know let's reach the people but it takes money to put gas in those buses and it takes money to change those tires I don't know about you. I wouldn't want to be on a bus that's got tires that are about to blow up in the middle of summer on the freeway. It takes money to fix the stuff that needs to be fixed. Seems like every week I'm, well, we got it. Oh, the, this bus, bus number, which one is it? Well, we need to do this and this is how much. And, uh, and I'm like, okay. It's like Ronnie, that's all, Ronnie's old. Ronnie, you know, it's like, he's always like, it seems like that's all I, I hear from Ronnie. We need more tires. We need to change tires. We need to do this. We need, and, the, and, what, and the air conditioner and this. And <laughs> I'm just giving him a hard time, but it's the truth, though. And, for, and, 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 you know, and for some, it's like, hey, the air conditioners aren't working that strong in some of the vehicles, you know, the, you know during the summer. All right, well, if we have a little more money, then we'll maybe we'll, we'll, we'll do <laughs> All I'm saying is, for those to run, to maintain them, someone's got to dig a ditch. The breakfast ministries and all the, the prison ministry, and everybody knows. Just read a letter last week, or a week, I don't We get so many letters. Someone getting a CD or whatever, I forgot what it was, I forgot I read it. And he didn't even know how he got it because how, how we got his name. So somebody wrote his, someone gave us the name though. And we immediately, you know, I give it to Glenda and Dave and they took it the, from the prison ministry. And the next month they received their materials. So that person, we don't even know where we got the information from, but we did get the information and we did exactly what we said we we're going to do like we do with everybody. Put them on the list and he got a whole bunch of stuff. Not trying to find the person that gave it to us and say, hey, can you give us $5 for this cost? don't charge you understand we have like like some 500 inmates right now that we that we send information to every month oh. and each package as I've said before it costs five about five dollars to put it in and to mail it with a stamp and all that stuff so you start to do the math but somebody continues to dig a ditch within this church and the water keeps coming so someone in a prison that's ready to give up receives the word and all of a sudden it starts to believe that it's not the way you start it's the way you finish that i am anointed i am dangerous and i am a mighty voice for god yeah I, that was me back then but now with jesus i'm washed by the blood of jesus and you know what uh, 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 i'm gonna move forward and there's still time for me not just to get to heaven but to go back out there and when I get back out there to do something great for God to live for him many in the room here we probably need to do this start digging a ditch with your giving Because when you're giving, you're putting God first. And stop saying, I can't. And start saying, Lord, I thank you for the $10 that's still in my hand. And here's one 
Hey, you can do one out of the ten. That's all you, at minimum, yeah. But really, you, when you start going, you start to give above that anyway. And saying, well, I can't afford to give. Like I've said many times, you can't afford not to give. I'm saying our giving is not just in finances, it's our, in giving, in serving, in, in our time, our effort. Yeah, you know, there's a lot, but one area is in our giving. The miracle of this place continues in the inner city because people are digging ditches and they're giving. So 10, take away one. I've always said this. Let's say 20. And let's say we give two to God. That leaves us with 18. $18. You say, well, that, see, I only got 18 left. Well, if you kept the other two, you only have 20 left. What are we talking about? Is that going to change your circumstances? No. Are, are, you, are you listening? Oh, now I, oh, and I got only 18 left. All right, keep the two, and what do you got left? 20. You're still in a mess. You're still in debt. You're still struggling. But if I give the two to God, even though in my mind this doesn't make sense, how am I supposed to? You're asking me to give when, I'm, I, when I need? You're asking me to give when I'm the one that needs to receive. You mean if I dig a ditch and with no clouds, no, you're gonna, and, the, and the water's going to come from where? Look at somebody, that's not your problem. Look at someone say, stay in your lane. Ah, Jesus. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. But two, in the hands of God, you just dug a ditch. Watch this, watch this, watch this real quick. You don't have to turn there. You can write the notes down just real quick. I'm just giving you. Watch this. Because some people say even giving and tithing, that was during the law. That was during the law. And it's like, you know what? Let me see it right there. See, that's the wrong. Watch this. Before the law. So I'm going to help somebody here. Well, that was during the law of Moses, and that's one of the law, and, give, and tithing, so that we're out of that. Well, let me, let me go before the law. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Oh, no, Genesis, oh, that's the wrong one. Genesis um, 14, 14. Yeah, 14. Genesis chapter 14, um, then, then um, verse 18. Uh, uh, Genesis 14, verse 8. Then Meshizedek, king of Salam, brought out bread and wine, he was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, who delivered your enemies into your hand. And then, so, Mesizedek, and there's a lot of people that this was a reincarnation of Jesus, but this was a type of, there's a lot, but the bottom line with this, this king of Salam is symbolic of God, it's symbolic of the church, it's symbolic, it's, so, So he got blessed, and after Abraham got blessed by the blessed by the church, blessed, you're saved, and you've been you're understanding the word now. Watch what Abram does. He gave him a tenth of everything. He did what? Be, that was before the law. Now, if you read about Abraham. He, he, he did pretty good in his lifetime on earth. In other words, he was blessed in a crazy way. So I've learned when something is successful in a person's life, I like to know what they're doing and how they got successful. The principles, the, the keys. So I'm looking at Abraham's life and I'm like, okay. And the Bible tells me that God blessed him in his lifetime 
to great measure. And then I read about this. And then I realize, could that be one of the reasons also? Because every time he received, every time he got blessed, he gave a tenth. Before the law. Why would Abraham do that? Maybe there's something to it. Real quick, let me just say Malachi real quick. Malachi chapter um, 3. Let me do this and I'm done. Are you alright? You got it, Ma Ma Malachi chapter... Chapter 3, verse 10. Put, yeah, put it up because I can't, I can't even see these words. Under. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. L look at something. The storehouse is the church. The storehouse. The storehouse is the local church that, you have been, uh, that you've been called to. Uh, uh, now, when we give above uh, to ministries and other places, that's an offering. That's above and beyond. The tithe comes to where you're being fed, the, the, where you're connected, to where you're growing. Got it? Look at something, got it. He says, test me in this. There may be food in my house. Food, food, food. Prison ministry, food, food, food. Bus ministry, food, food, food. Television ministry, food, food. Breakfast ministry. Uh, uh, uh. Test me in this. The only place you'll find in the Bible ever in the scriptures from beginning to end where God says test me in this is only right there. You'll not, you won't find that again. You won't find that anywhere in scripture where God says test me in this. Isn't that interesting? The only place you see God said test me in this or try me in this. I, he's saying I double dog mm, dare you to trust me in this and see that I don't do exactly what I say I'm going to do. And why would he do that? Have you ever, do you guys, I don't know about you, but for me, I stop and say, like, why would he say that there? Why does he say, trust, test me in this, or test me in, you know, to, you know, like in other words, there's so many other places he could say that. But why there? Because he knows how, because he knows how we are. He knows that when some of us come to church, it's like, oh, they're asking for money again. And you're the same one that just goes to the bar and blows your whole check. You had no problem blowing your whole check and, and buying rounds of drink to the people that you can't even get along with at work. Because you're so wasted though. And, ah, everybody's your buddy now. Then you wake up the next morning going, what in the world? I, I bought a drink for who? And you didn't complain once while you were at the house of the bar. And now you come here and you've been blessed, you've been helped, you've been encouraged, somehow, some way. It might be a TV program, it might be a bus, somewhere you receive prayer, someone spent time, and, and then you dare. Come on. Look at somebody, really? Okay, okay. Test me in this says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough to go to the next verse. He didn't just say blessing. He said, what? So Overflow. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines of your fields will not cast their food. The Lord Almighty, verse 12, then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. As you read, I don't got time to go through the whole teaching. Your one act of digging a ditch in your tithing, in your giving, has a sevenfold blessing in that text. Now, I'm not doing it so I can get the sevenfold blessing. I'm giving because I'm thankful for the cross, that I'm alive and saved. I'm giving because I want to make sure others receive the same hope. And then I'm also giving by faith and praise God. If it's in there, though, I receive it. I'm ready to receive. 
with the understanding that, Lord, the more I increase, the more I'm going to be able to be a blessing also. Does this make sense? I want to encourage us to do the possible and to trust in the Lord. It says, test me in this. If you haven't been, if you haven't been a giver, start being a giver. Start somewhere. I say this all the time here at the church when we do events, because everything we do, we always do for free. Everything. And even sometimes when we try to put something, we do, well, even like conferences or whatever, if someone can't get it, we, we make it happen to make sure everyone gets there. That's how we've always operated. We, when we've done barbecues and you know how we've done, we're all outside here and we say, if they want to eat five hamburgers and five hot dogs and five, let them keep coming through line. We've always, and we've done it. One thing I can't stand is when there's an advertising for church, it's like, we're going to do this. You know, it's like, even when they say like it's $2, you get all, you know, food in it. And then you go over there and you go and you get like a half a hot dog with a couple chips. And you're like hungry. You're like, man, I'm going to go to, you know, they have bar, I'm going to eat good. And then you're like, man, I'm still hungry. I don't know if you've been to anything like that before. It's like false advertising, though. I, I'm not going to that church again. No, it's like, man, if you're going to do something, do it. Let's do it right. You know, I mean, so I know God's always has told me how you would feel somebody. Make sure you can learn from it and make sure you do the opposite. So that's why we've always done that. Like, well, I don't care if it's like, you know, they want to keep going through If we're going to do it, they want to keep going. Give them as much as they can until they can't eat anymore. Have we always done that? But what I always say to the church, we'll say, Let's, let's all do our best in bringing potato chips and pops. And, then, and I go, now some might not be able to be able to bring a case of pop or, or even a 12-pack. But, 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 we, but we don't have this in the church. I, um, I can't. No, but we can all do something. You can't do 12? You can bring one can. Can't you bring one can? You mean the same bad self you that was out there? That when you wanted to get something, you found a way to get it? And you can't tell me you can't find 50 cents and get a pop and bring it to church? Uh, now it's starting to get really quiet. Because that makes sense. And that's why we're where we're at sometimes. Well, I can't, I can't, I mean, you don't understand my situation. Okay. But there's others, though, that are in a position that God's blessed. Well, if you bring one, you missed it also because you can bring a case depending on where you're at but we can all do start somewhere don't say I can't see what you have and then follow the instructions and watch what God will do because I promise you the water not that the water will come the water has been flowing you just haven't dug a ditch but the good news is oh man this is good the water's still flowing all you got to do is pick up a shovel and start oh shout yes I'm teaching this thing in a few minutes we're going to take the offering and we're going to finish this service I'm going to do it, but this was, this, now you always say I took the offering, then I teach, and I say there's not going to be another offering, so I don't want people, so I'm always like sensitive, I don't, I don't want anybody to question what we do, I, I know, but everyone knows us, we're not about that. But this time I can tell you, God said, take it after you teach it. So this is under his instruction. We're going to take the offering up here, we're going to do it while we're worshiping and praising the good Lord in a second. Ira, where's Ira? We're going to do it, we're going to... Besides the offering, there's going to be opportunities in the month and a half to two months to dig ditch and to start your miracle in your finances. There's a lot of things going on. Um, with the women's thing going on that we can be a blessing into, to sow into, to make it possible for others to come also. We have, um, we're doing, um, do we have the screen? Can you put the, the, the flower? Do we have the thing for the holiday? We don't have it. I thought we added something. Um, during the Halloween weekend, we're doing the illustrated sermon. Um, checkmate. Um, revised. Actually, we call it Checkmate 2, coming back. Part 2. And remember how when we've done that, it's been, it was phenomenal. I mean, lots of people got saved. Very dramatic. 
you know, viewer discretion on the bottom. We put, you know, make sure, you know, I thought that was kind of cute. We were on the bottom. Because we got stuff and things. And the point I'm trying to say is like, we're going to, um, we got it. We're going to do it on Saturday, which is Halloween night. And then on Tuesday, again, we're going to rerun it. And then, and then Bill Weiss is going to come in the following weekend, you know, who had 23 minutes in hell. So we're kind of, we're going to take what the enemy went for evil that whole week, and we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna win people to Jesus that whole week. Very strategic. <laughs> Saying that. That Saturday, we have, um, we're going to have the kids. We're going to go to the youth building, and we're going we're gonna to have, so, so, because the, because of, it's pretty intense, the drama and, the, 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 you know, the, the, the demons and things that we're going to be doing. So we're going to have a thing for the kids, games. They're going to be doing every, I mean, I forgot, there's a whole list of stuff they're going to be doing there. And we're going to give bags of candy to the kids when they leave, okay? And why is this? The more we have, the more we'll give. So I need everybody. How much does candy cost? Because, you know what I'm saying? Something, do something. Uh, 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 if you just if you, candy, uh, what, bags, whatever, just bring them in. Not chips, just can, not chips, right? No, candy. We have, what, I don't know what kind of stuff they get now. What's the good stuff that for the what, what's the good stuff that you chocolate bars? Yeah, you know what I mean? Don't. Yeah, mix, but don't, don't, don't get bad candy. You know, the stuff that's like, hey, you know, when you get it, it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Get the stuff that you'd want to eat. Does that make sense? And it needs to be wrapped, sealed, wrapped. It can't be like something you wrapped, wrapped candy, you know, wrapped to stuff in the packages. And what I'm trying to say is like, if you can't bring a bag of candy or a bag of chocolate, then at least get one piece of Snickers at the store. What I'm trying to say is do something though. Don't be a spectator in this and just start bringing it in so we can start loading up. So that's number one. So just start bringing it in, just start unloading it in the bookstore. Just bring it to the bookstore. The people in the bookstore will put it back there. So we'll start from this point and just start bringing it in. Whatever you can do. Uh, uh, uh. Um, there's also, um, 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 we got a trip to Uganda and we got the tickets. We're going to be, um, what, what, does that in there, the Hill Songs thing? Well, I, we're raffling off. When are we going to start? Oh, next week. Never mind. Okay, well, I'll say it now and you can prepare yourself. We're, we're doing, there's four tickets, four, right? Man, you guys are killing me. How many tickets did we say? How many did we Robert? How many? Four. Two sets of tickets to Hill Songs. They're going to be here. When? Oh, it's going to be that night of the drama. Okay, so if you end up getting them and you go, you got to be here Tuesday night, though, amen? If you're not going to be here on Saturday night. So it's Hill Songs. They're going to be here. And it's four tickets, two sets of two. Um, we're going to raffle them off. We're going to do $1, you know, for tickets. The point is we're going to Uganda, and we're, we're taking the, the, the whole ministry team over there to, uh, for TV. So we're taking all the cameras, and we, we need some more stuff because we're going to record everything. It's quite the... Um, we just we took the step and now it's becoming a whole thing to do it right it's costing you know and the equipment we need to add on some stuff to get to, to so when we come back we want to hear all this stuff on tv so it's not like just taking a camera from here to california it's a whole thing and then bringing all the stuff in how so we're, we're, we're taking the whole we're going there bringing all the cameras that we have all these cameras and we're going to record all the the, the um um because it's going to be the whole weekend it's gonna be morning afternoon night and i'm speaking three times there and and, and even in the morning the estimated cards are gonna be at, at minimal ten thousand people at these things so we want to get it all we want to get all the footage so we're going to be raffling these tickets off and that money is to help with the media part all that's going towards that so understand that's that's what's happening there i'm trying to be i'm trying to be giving i'm not going to be bringing this up over i'm just so you know what the, what's going on so you can you can get some of these if you want to go go if you win if you don't want to go, um, 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 just and you win, give them to me. No, I got to be here. Never mind. I got to be here. I forgot. I got to do the illustrated sermon. Or I can give them to me, and then I'll give it to somebody else and say, look, you know, I just want to bless you. And they'll think I'm giving it to you. know, like I, I, uh, uh, But I'm saying maybe, and then, maybe you, just, you want to support the, that part of the ministry, and then you can bless, if you win, bless somebody with them. So 
you, or someone might say, I don't want, you know, I don't really want to just stop, no, buy some tickets and give them out throughout the church. So, you know, just have some fun. But what I'm saying is, don't sit in here and say, well, I can't. Four quarters, get at least one. Because we were talking about, it's like, man, we got a lot of things going on, and we don't want to overwhelm. One chocolate, one ticket. What are we talking about there so far? Dollar fifty, two, no, two, let's say three dollars. Don't tell me we can't come up with three dollars for the kingdom. Because you and me know that we came up with three dollars when we. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't be a spectator. Do something. Even if it's four quarters. Give God something to work with. Get in there. Get involved. So I want to encourage you. With all these events that are going on, there's opportunities to give. To support and to sow into the kingdom. When we give here in the offerings also with our tithes, it's going to, and you see, and there's places where we say, man, I, we give and we never see anything they talk about. I know you see everything that's happening here. And, and we're close. We're coming close to some, some things are happening. I'm, this, I'm not going to say anything else about maybe some expansion. Because we've been waiting, we've been saving, we've been positioning for a while. But every time we've said we're going to do something, we've always done it. So we're, when you give here, it supports everything that's going out here. And you see it every week. Everything you see every week. And we continue to fuel it. And the deeper we dig, the more God's going to, and we're going to be able to contain to do more for his glory. Amen? Amen. Could someone praise the Lord? Amen. Lift up your hand and say, I receive it. I receive it. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, real quick, and then we'll do, so. let's get one song when we, when we finish with the announcements. We'll finish it with a worship song. We'll finish with one worship song, and what we'll do is like when, we, when Ira finishes with these announcements, we're going to go into worship, and if we worship the Lord, I'm going to have us, I want to get us also sometimes in the mind. It's like, don't, it's not, when we get, and I, I haven't done this in a while. Don't be religious, and yeah, okay, it's offering, oh, here's my dollar. We're gonna, it's worship. Be excited. Have a heart of thanksgiving. We're worshiping the Lord with our giving. So as we worship the Lord, when we finish, I'm going to put the offering envelopes here, and I want you to come up yourself with a heart of thanksgiving and worship and, 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 and start. Just do your best and continue to do your best. Follow the instructions and see what God will do. God says, test me to this. And watch this. And this is an easy thing for him. Whatever that thing you're dealing with, God says, I got it. Do you believe it? Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome first-time guests at the end of the service. Praise the Lord. Who's here for the first time? Welcome. God bless you. Welcome. God bless you. We're glad you're here. We're glad you're here. Welcome. Anyone else that raised your hand or didn't raise your hand, we just want to welcome you. We're glad you're here. Um, I want to go ahead and, uh, ladies first, going to have Pastor Cheryl share real quickly. Well, ladies, I just want to let you know that you, if you haven't registered for the retreat and you still want to, you still can. There's registration forms in the bookstore. Um, please do it tonight. If you don't do it tonight, um, give the church a call and let them know that you're planning to register because I do need to turn the numbers in um, by Friday. So um, we want everyone that has an opportunity to go um, to go. So if you're not working and you're, you can get the time off, and you want to go, even if you don't have the money, please come and see me. Um, if you've already registered and you haven't paid yet, um, please come and see me as well so we can get the, the money flowing. And I just want to say thank you to all of you who have participated in our fundraiser. We are almost there. We've almost got everybody covered. So if God puts something else on your heart uh, that you still want to help out, we'll take your money. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I want to let you guys know, in case you're not aware or you haven't been able to make it, there's Bible studies every Wednesday night at 630. Amen? It's a, it's a real blessing. Women meet in the kitchen. 
and the uh, men meet in the youth building. And the new study is called Weird because normal is not working for the men's group. <laughs> I don't really know what the depth of that means, but it's deep. It's very deep. Praise God. But uh, it's good stuff. Seriously, if you, if you want to connect with God and with people, you know, fellowship is part of this whole thing. Come to the Bible study if you're able to make it. And they do have child care. And last, uh, last but not least, Eric will be sending out emails um, for the people that have signed up to participate in the drama. By the grace of God, he is uh, reviewing the final review of the script for tomorrow so we can get everything going. Um, some emails that we received from the people here weren't good, unfortunately, so we'll do the best we can. But if you were at the auditions or you filled out the uh, contact form, we need you here this Sunday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. to get started. So if you can't make it, please call the church hotline, hit option five or six and leave a voicemail. But we're about to get started. We're about, hold on to your seats, because I promise you, God is about to do, and I'm telling you this, like on the inside, I know God is about to do something really, really big, really. And I'm not exaggerating on that at all. So I just want to stir up your, stir up your, your spirit, stir up your faith. God is really about to do something really crazy big here. Amen? Praise God. Wow. Good. Amen. Amen. Uh, um, um, someone was asking us where, where we're going to Uganda. We're going to Lira. It's called Lira. 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 Pray for us. All I know is it's going to take about, when it's all said and done, we're flying 30 hours within, within the between breaks. Then we get there, and then we have to drive 390 miles. For real, and I, and I guess when we land, they're going to be there to pick us up, and we start driving then. And so I was like, you can do it. Praise the Lord. Be nice if it was like a big van or something, and could each one, you know, there's like a bed back there, and you just kind of uh, look at someone and say, buck up, pastor. Or look at me, look at me and say, buck up in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So praise God. So be in prayer. We're going to be leaving the beginning of December. The second, I think, is December. Okay. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Let's stand to our feet. Yeah, and, and you'll be able to see a lot of the... So when we come back, we're going to do quite a few programs. We're going to start airing them when we get back after editing. So you'll get to see all that God did out there. And... Um, to be awesome praise the lord um um let's get the offering of uh, offering buckets over here in the front as we start to worship right now um just pray uh the lord to, to be obedient and um the lord bless you as you give here tonight um, um we have a lot to be thankful for salvation thankful for what god's doing here in this church thankful for this past weekend how god moved healed delivered how awesome was that amen we're definitely we already talked he's coming back again amen we got, we're talking about a lot of things. Amen. Praise the Lord. So as we worship the Lord, uh, uh, make your way up to the uh, altar. And we'll see you next service. Praise the Lord.